Okay, so I just finished the zipper pouch, fanny pack, the bum bag, depending on which part of the world you come from. Looking forward to using this for taking walks with my dog. Okay, so we're heading out on our walk and just to show you, oops, <laughs> just to show you, I have my crossbody. I think you can see it. There you go. I added a few extra compartments, just an extra pocket so that I could store my headphones in it. Let me show you all the different ways that you can actually wear this. Because you have an adjustable strap, you can wear it over the shoulder like that. You could also wear it as a crossbody by just simply lengthening the, the strap. And then you could also wear it across your chest and have it to where your pockets are accessible and kind of safe for if you're traveling. Lastly, you just tighten up the belt and I kind of made mine generous, really generous I guess, strap-wise. I have another um, strap, but I made it big so that it would fit over my coat in the winter time. I hope that you find this project helpful and fun and make one for yourself. So starting off with the supplies, what you'll need is this pouch the way I designed it using some fleece as the lining and then I used denim on the top so I didn't need to interface it with anything. I just used a thicker denim. It provided a good bit of stability. Depending on the fabric that you're going to use, you may need to use some SF-101 some medium weight stabilizer, a rotary mat and cutter with a ruler. The ruler that I'm using is 24 inches and the mat that I have is a 36 by 36 by 36. So you'll need an ironing board and an iron, some basic supplies, sewing supplies such as clips. If you're using denim or cotton, you could use pins as well, 12 inch zipper. In this case, I'm using number five zipper tape, 12 inches long, a zipper head. If you're just getting the regular zipper from the store, just make sure that it's about 12 inches long. You'll need two D-rings. My hardware all measures one inch, but just use whatever you have on hand. Whatever the width of your hardware is, you'll want to make sure that you multiply the width times four to get the right uh, measurement in fabric. A slider and two lobster clasps. I'm using swivel hooks, some snips. For the sewing machine, I'm using a Microtex needle and I am using some polyester thread. I'm going to be using some rivets. Now this is just optional accent, but I'm going to be using some antique bronze eight millimeter rivets. You'll need two and then a rivet press if you have one. If you have a handheld, that will work as well. Again, this is optional. And a hole puncher is useful. I like using a stiletto sometimes to guide the fabric. An air and water soluble ink marker. Just always test it out on your fabric to make sure it doesn't leave a mark. Some bag tags if you have them. Okay, so for your fabric pieces, you will need four by four inch squares. For the strap, I'm using some denim fabric and the measurement is four inches in width by 66 inches. Then I'm using some fleece batting and this will provide a good bit of stability for the bottom. Rectangles measuring 11 by 8 inches. You could use all of the same fabric if you'd like. Oh, and a sewing machine, obviously. Okay, so take your 4 by 4 inch pieces of fabric, take the raw edges, meet them in the middle, and then press them in half. And that will be for your D-rings. So next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch down either side one eighth of an inch in from the edge using a three millimeter stitch length and backstitch at the beginning and end. 
So you'll repeat for the other D ring as well. Okay, so before moving on to the rivet press and the hole puncher, it's time to treat yourself to something a little sweet. I made this for Halloween. And I think I'm going to have a Rolo. I think that's what they're called. Pop one right out of there. Isn't that cute? All right. Alice. Let's get back to work. This is what you should have so far. Grab your marking utensil and kind of go about halfway. And you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you're going to have enough room away from the metal piece so that you have plenty of room for your rivet. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, repeat it for both sides. I'm gonna take this gadget and I have it on the smallest hole and squeeze. Give it a little twist and it makes a hole. So next you're gonna grab your rivet and you're going to grab one that has the long end and one that has the little short end. And you're going to put it through and then snap it together. It makes a clicking sound. And then take your rivet press and you're going to set it on the little base. And then you're going to, and it's gonna click. And there you have a rivet. And grab your zipper tape. So I always keep a lighter handy in the sewing room for zipper tape. And also when sewing with nylon, you can burn the ends and get rid of some of those loose little fuzzies. Just run it on the end. So then I open up the zipper end. Okay, so then once you have one side on, you'll open up the other end and you will bring on the zipper and make sure that they are kissing each other. Okay, so you have your clamp on the end of the table. So here you're gonna slip on the zipper head so it's holding the tab on the other side and the rounded part is facing up. And then you're going to put so this side is the right side of the zipper head. So I wanna make sure that the zipper teeth are going with the right side. Go in at a V and you're gonna kind of offset it a little bit by one or two teeth and then pull down. So there's one zipper tab on and then you're going to Repeat it for the other side. So there you have your, if you get a little gap like that, not to worry. It's just because this end is uneven. So I'm going to just repeat it till I get it right. There you have it. Back stitch over these nylon zipper teeth. That way your zipper pulls don't go flying off. There. Okay, so for this bit, you're going to take your strap and you're going to press it in half. And you'll do that all the way down the strap and it helps if you turn your iron on. And then once you've done it all the way down, you're gonna come back and much like we did the little tabs for the D-rings, you're gonna press in on both sides towards the center, so the two raw edges should be towards the center. So at the end of your strap, before you fold it and stitch down, you want to wrap the edges in, especially with this denim that frays so much. So I'm going to tuck it in by, oh, about half an inch or so, and then tuck the sides back in. And because this is denim, it's gonna get quite thick. If you're making your strap out of cotton, it won't be so thick. And then when you're taking it to the sewing machine, you can finish stitching down 
and across and that will give you a nice finished end. If you're using denim and, and your machine doesn't like thick fabrics, you might want to practice making a cotton strap first. You see how thick that is? So I'm going to take it slow at the sewing machine and bring up the strap through that side and then come back down on the other side. And at this point you want to make sure that you have about an inch or so. And this is where you have the option to rivet press it if you'd like. Or you can take it to the sewing machine, make sure that it's laying flat and you can see all your metal pieces so you don't accidentally sew over the metal piece. But you will, you can sew a box. You can also put a crisscross at that point. I think I'm actually going to rivet press that down and it secures the rivet. You're going to put it, the buckle facing the right side up and go all the way to the other side, making sure that it's not twisted. And you're going to take one of your swivel hooks and you're going to put it on with the swivel hook facing the right side, which is up. Go all the way to the about halfway point and then you're going to flip it over to the wrong side so that when you get over here you can see this is the wrong side. And you're going to go all the way back to this other end and you're going to fold it over to where your wrong sides are kissing each other. And you're going to go up through the clasp so you're making sure that nothing's twisted and back down and if you're using denim this is where it gets kind of thick, thick. Ah, see? So this is looking like a strap. <laughs> so you have an adjustable strap there. And you go all the way to the other end. So this is right side facing up. And you're going to grab your other lobster claw and you are going to Put it facing up and then all you're doing is folding over so you've got the fold to the wrong side so you can see it's on the wrong side of the adjustable strap. And again you finish off by sewing a square with an X box in it or again you can use your rivets and rivet press if you have one mark a spot in the center. You just want to make sure it's not wonky when you hole punch it or sew it. That's where your clips come in handy. And the strap is now done. Set it to the side. Winter has finally abated. The aspen leaves are out. Yet, the mountains still have snow. So grab the piece that is six inches by eight inches, right sides facing up. You're going to fold it right sides together and you can pin or clip this. So down the sides and over, leaving a gap at the bottom. Back stitching to strengthen that. We're I'm going to turn it and I'm going to sew with one quarter inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Take scissors, trim it down to reduce the bulk. Now it's time to turn your pocket. It's a tiny little pocket. <laughs> and just push out your corners. 
when we attach it, we'll be sewing down and we'll be closing this gap that we have at the bottom. You can pop a pin in it just to remind you which side the bottom is on. I'm just going to top stitch it about an eighth of an inch from the edge using a three millimeter stitch length. It's a small pocket, but I find that it's useful in keeping just a little bit of separation from the rest of the pouch where I like to keep my headphones. I'm going to grab your rotary cutter mat and ruler. We want to splice the panel five inches up from the bottom and that's going to be where a zipper goes. Okay, so there's one panel. And then what I like to do is one of the denim. Place the zipper right sides down with the zipper heads out of the way and in the middle. And now you're gonna have extra on both sides. The zipper's gonna hang off and that's kind of what you want. And then you're going to take the other piece that matches in dimension and size and you're going to sandwich the zipper, making sure that the edges are flush and that the sides are flush. And so across with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length, about a quarter of an inch away from the zipper teeth. Go ahead and put on your zipper foot if you need to. I have my narrow foot on, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so now with wrong sides together, I'm just going to pull on it, clip the sides, and I'm going to top stitch down with a three millimeter stitch length, probably giving it a gentle pull as I am going down. About an eighth of an inch. Okay, so next I'm grabbing the top panel, which is the denim panel, and I'm marking the center point of that and then I'm going to place it face down lining up the center point with a zipper so the right side of the fabric is facing down and then I'll grab the lining top portion and binding the center point as well making sure that it is uh, facing with the right side facing up then I'm going to stitch it using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and again using my zipper foot or narrow foot I'm going to just glide down the side of the zipper teeth. Then I'm going to bring the panels wrong sides together. I'm going to pull it away from the zipper and clip it so that it's nice and taut. I'm going to top stitch with a three millimeter stitch length, one eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. Okay, so next it's time to prepare for the cross hatching and the center points of each of the panels you could mark with whatever tool that it would work for your fabric. I'm actually using a bar of soap on the denim because it shows well. And then you'll see me in a minute, um, I switch to the, the air erasable marker. I'm making the cross hatch marks one and a half inches apart from each other. It's time to grab the fleece and cutting four inches from the bottom. And I'm making a panel that will sandwich between the front and the lining. And I will repeat the process and cut a two inch strip for the top. Then at this point, if you have a bag tag, you can go ahead and add it. Completely optional. So I'm quilting only through the cotton fabric and the batting. I've pulled the lining from behind out. Next, I'm grabbing a soda can or you can use whatever circular object you like. And I am again using my handy dandy soap. And then I'm just trimming the corners into a rounded shape. And I'm using the front panel as a template to trim out the other panels. Now I'm taking the lining and placing it under the front panel and just opening the zip to verify the correct placement. 
Next I'm taking the, another floral panel and this time I'm placing it right side down and I'm stacking the exterior panel on top just using it as a tracing tool. So you can see that I have the front panel and lining and then the other lining is for the center panel and repeating the process of rounding the corners. Okay, so next I am separating the front panel and the front pocket lining from the rest of the panels and just setting the rest of the panels aside. So I'm adding a second top stitch line, securing the top pocket, and then I'm just trimming the top extra part of the lining of the pocket. So now you can kind of see the interior lining of that front pocket. Trimming the excess off the zipper and clipping the D-ring tabs on. Just gonna quickly baste it in place with about a four millimeter stitch length. So next I'm grabbing the back lining and this is going to be for the pocket. I'm going to place the pocket with the gap two and three quarters in from either side and then one and a half inches down from the top. Just pinning it in preparation for sewing. I'm going to sew starting with a back stitch all the way around the pocket except for the top with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Next I'm grabbing the zipper for the top main pocket and I'm just finding the halfway point. I'm going to place it face down on the front panel, making sure that the zipper is, when it's facing down on the right side of the fabric, the zipper head should be off to your right. And then I am attaching the floral lining. I'm just aligning it to the top and aligning the center points up with the zipper. I'm just going to clip it together so right sides should be facing each other. Sew at a quarter inch from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length, getting that top zipper attached. Everything's looking good, so it's time to get the other side done. Next, I'm going to find the halfway point of the lining that has a pocket on it, and then also finding the center point for the exterior back panel. So making sure that the pocket is going in the right direction, that is towards the top of the pouch. I'm lining the front panel and the lining on top of the floral lining that has a pocket on it, and then sandwiching the last denim panel on top with the right sides facing down. Because there are so many different panels, I just encourage you to keep checking to make sure everything's attached correctly. And clipping down the sides, I'm going to sew one quarter inch from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. So next I'm opening up the panels. So I'll have the main zipper in the center. I'll have the front side of the panel on my left hand side and then the lining and the exterior back panel on the other side and i'm going to splay it open and top stitch along the main zipper one eighth of an inch from the folded edge using a three millimeter stitch length Okay, 
Okay, so next I am making sure that I separate the lining pieces to one side and I'm kind of pulling it taut. Same thing, I just flipped it around. And now it's time to make sure that the zipper teeth are folded. The zipper is the correct side of the zipper is actually pointing towards the main panel and then flipping the exterior back panel back on it on top of that, isolating the lining panel to one side and clipping. Now I'm marking about a four inch gap in the lining panel and then I'm marking one and a half inch squares in each of the corners and cutting out the corners to make the box corners. So then I'm going to sew 3 8 of an inch in from the edge, except for at the turning gap. And I'm going to leave that open. You want to make sure that the zipper in the middle is open. And then I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and not forgetting to back stitch at the beginning and end of each of your stopping points. I'm not going to trim this, just a little bit of this. You'll want extra for the turning. Okay, so now I'm going to box the corners. You just want to make sure that your seams are matching and you can kind of stagger your seams where one goes that way and one goes the other. You just want to make sure that you're keeping it in the same direction for both sides. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stitch those closed. Time to turn the bag the right side out. Just take care not to rip anything. Close the gap. 